after time I was searching for peace in some void I was trying to blame all my ears in this world I was in safest relationships use me till I was done in and all the time someone was waiting to free me from sin he was there story. So today's children, this Sabbath children's story is about Jephthah. And the, he, the story, if you want to read the law, the story comes from Judges 11 verses 31 and 34. So when Jephthah and his soldiers were, were going to go to a battle against the Ammonites, he made a vow with God that whatso when he if God delivers the Ammonites into his hands that whatsoever cometh out of his house when he goes home in peace shall he um sacrifice to the Lord as a burnt offering. So 
we're going to read what he said in Judges 11 verses 31. And it said, Then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet, to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord, and I will offer it, offer it up for a burnt offering. And so the Lord delivered um, the Ammonites, the Ammonites into um, Zephyr's hands, and so he won the battle. And so when he was returning to his um, home in Mizpah, um, his only daughter um, came out of the the tent in, with um, timbrels and dances, and neither son nor daughter was um, beside her. And so we're going to read um, the verse, which is um, Judges 11 verses 34, and it says, and Japheth, Jephthah um, came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dancers. And she, she was his only child. Beside her, he, he had neither son nor daughter. So, um, he, Jephthah, had um, a very broken heart because that was his only child and and that he had to sacrifice her to the Lord and so that's um what he did. He told his um daughter about that and her do his daughter had no rebellion and like tried to run away and so he let her say goodbye to relatives and friends, and then he gave her to the Lord and the God of her. So we should learn from this that we don't need vows to um um to make the Lord bless us. We just need to trust in Him and to have faith, and that He will help us win the battle against Satan. And we're going to pray uh, that we don't be like Jephthah and that we uh, that we don't do vows, that we just have faith in the Lord to help us win the battle. So let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for this lovely day. Thank you for protecting us. Please help us not to be like Jephthah. Please help us to not use vows just for you to bless us. Can you please help us to have faith in you and to do the right thing? And can you please help us not to give conditions to you? And can you please bless us and can you please forgive us of our sins? And can you please help us to forgive others if they have wronged us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and a happy summer. I hope I find you well and that God is, uh, I pray and hope that God is taking care of you wherever you are. Um, it is a privilege and an honor for me to be sharing his word with you this morning. Um, even in these difficult times, God still has a word for his people. Uh, things are not normal as we know them, but we know that God's word uh, is always there for us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Um, I'm going to ask that we uh, pray before we get to consider some text from the Bible. Let us close our eyes and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, dear Lord, for such a time once more as this for us where we are going to read from your pages of the Bible um, and see the powerful Jesus. We pray, dear Lord, that you be with us, bless us, and forgive us of our sin. May you speak to us this morning so that we can be a changed people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, like I said, today we are going to consider um, the chapter 
uh, 8 of Luke. And in there is a chapter that I like so much, the chapter that speaks to, to me, because every time I read this chapter, I see the power for Jesus and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ in this chapter. And um, for those who want to like to give topics to sermons, we are going to be talking about faith. Um, we are going to be talking about faith. So the book of Luke chapter 8 is uh, um, an interesting book, an uh, interesting chapter. Jesus is um, going about preaching and bringing uh, good tidings of the kingdom to many. At this time, him and the twelve disciples and uh, we are introduced in the chapter in the chapter with so many stories and parables but we're not going to look at all of them we will look at one particular story that i like so much um but in the lead up to that story there's some things that that happen and so uh, we are told uh, we meet in the first chapters in the first verses of the chapter we meet a woman called mary and this is a woman who had seven demons and the woman was healed by Jesus Christ. And after that, Jesus then tells a story, a parable of a sower, which is another sermon on his own, but we're not going to look at that story today. And then after that, we see um, that Jesus and his disciples continue with their journey and cross over, decides to cross over to the other side of the sea. And in that process of going over to the other side of the sea, the sea gets angry and the boat that Jesus and his disciples are in starts to shake and things are not normal on the sea. And at this time, we find that Jesus Christ is actually sleeping and resting. And uh, the disciples are unsure of what to do. So they woke up Jesus Christ and he asked them a question. And he says to them, where is your faith? This is after Jesus has um, silenced the sea. And he asked the disciples, where is your faith? But that's another story for another day. And then after that, as soon as they come out of the boat, they meet a certain man who is possessed. And this man, we are told in the Bible that his name is Legion. He says his name is Legion. Why? Because they are many. He is possessed by many demons. Uh, and they get into an encounter. This man gets into an encounter with Jesus Christ. They start to um, to talk, and then eventually this man is freed from his uh, from these demons that are, have possessed him. And then thereafter, we are then told in the same chapter of a story that leads into our story, which is the story of a certain ruler. And uh, this guy is given a name, Jairus. And then the Bible from Luke chapter 8, verse 40, 41, we read, and it says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. So this man is a ruler. His name is Jairus, and he has a problem. And the problem is that his only daughter is sick and his only daughter is dying back at home and what does he want <clears throat> he wants jesus to come to his house lay his hands upon his daughter so that she can be well so jairus has faith and jairus believes that if jesus comes to his house his child will be well and then now we are told that as jesus is making his way to jairus uh, house we, we are told of another story, which is going to be our story this morning. And this is the story of a woman. Uh, the woman, uh, according to verse 43, the Bible says, And a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, um, who had spent all her livelihood, all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus says, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him, saying, Master, the multitude throng and press thee. And you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive that virtue 
has gone out of me. Now the Bible says, now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling before Jesus Christ and told her story um, in the presence of all that were there. And verse 4 says, and she said, and, and he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Now, we've got an interesting story here. Jairus is uh, asking Jesus to go to his house so that Jesus can lay his hands um, on his daughter, his only daughter, who is not well. And Jairus, by faith, uh, he knows that Jesus will uh, heal his daughter. Now, as he's on his way, Jesus is on his way there. Uh, a certain woman comes out from nowhere. And this woman has a problem, according to, to the Bible and the verses that we've just read. This woman has a problem. She's got a physical problem. She has been sick for 12 years. And she, 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 she has spent all her living upon physician. Now, that seems to suggest to me that she had some savings. She had some money. She was not um, a poor person. She had uh, money to pay the doctors everywhere she went to uh, seek help. Uh, but the Bible then says the problem here is that she no longer has this money. She has spent it all trying to get well. And, but the biggest problem is that she doesn't get well. Now, brothers and sisters, now this woman has another problem. The first problem is that she is sick. And now she has a major problem that she doesn't have money. But without money these days, and even back then, you could not be able to see a doctor. We, we, uh, we know that even in this world that we live in, money is at the center of everything. If you do not have money, there are places you can't go. There are cars you can't drive. There are clothes you can't wear. There are phones you can't have. Uh, there are so many things that you can't have in life if you do not have money. But above all those things, one thing that worries uh, me um, sometimes is illness. Why? Because when you get sick, when you get ill, and you need medical attention, it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. Especially if that illness is going to require you to continuously visit the doctors. Now this is the same scenario here. She has an illness that is going on. The illness that hasn't been uh, cured yet. That doesn't have a cure. And the doctors have tried all they could. But they have failed. And now she has no money. And she is sick. And uh, because her illness was contagious. She cannot go to church anymore. Why? Because we are told, as we read, uh, as studied the Bible, that those days they lived under ceremonial laws. And one of the laws says, if you had such an illness, you would be excluded from worship. Uh, so you would even be excluded from the community. And you would have to live somewhere out there until, up to such a time, until you are well. And thereafter, you will still have to be isolated for seven days before you come back into the public space. And so this woman has a problem. She is physically weak. She has no money. She can't go to church. And she has no friends. She, can't, she doesn't have the family support around her. Read somewhere in the Bible about the story of uh, the rich, uh, about the story of the prodigal son. And the Bible says, as long as he had money, he had many friends. Uh, but as soon as he lost all his money, as soon as he lost all his wealth, they all deserted him. Uh, th that's what happens. It's normal when you have money, people, uh, when, when, when people even think or start to, be, uh, start to think that you have money, they come close to you. But when you are poor, um, uh, you lose everything. Now, the story then goes on to say, uh, this woman then uh, hears something. He is about Jesus. I don't know how, but, the, but we, as we read, we find out that she, she knows that Jesus is in, in town. She knows that Jesus is in her area. And she purposes in her heart to go and touch the helm of Jesus' garment. And for she says to herself, if only I can touch the helm of his garment, I will be healed. Now, because she has a problem, and this problem is going on for 12 years, I can imagine, and uh, uh, I can imagine in my mind what she is going through, um, 
and how desperate she is trying to get well. And the Bible then says, uh, she went, um, this is me thinking, she went into a certain corner as Jesus is making his way to Jairus' house. She went into a certain place. Because at this time, remember, as we were reading, we realized that Jesus is asking a question, who touched me? And the disciples are saying, the multitude thronged thee and praised thee, and you're asking such a question. So there's a big crowd here. So the question is, how does she get to Jesus Christ? She probably sits in a certain corner where she knows this is the way he's going to pass by. And then as she's sitting there, but before, before we get there, I, I'm imagining uh, the first text that she has to take. She's probably saying to herself, uh, she's probably speaking or singing in her mind, if it was me, I would be singing at this time, saying to myself, I'm standing on the promises of God. The promises that we find in the Bible, one of which says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, 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 and as she takes the first step and making her way to this corner where she wants to be, to wait for the day that this illness will be gone. I can imagine her singing a song. If it was me again, I'll be singing this song. I'm pressing on the upward way and new heights I'm gaining every day. So as she makes her way to this corner and she sits there and she waits for that moment when Jesus Christ passes by. And when Jesus comes to that place, she stretches out her hand and she reaches out to the border of his garment and she is immediately healed. Now, that is a miracle. She is immediately healed. Now, when her faith touches the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, she is completely healed. When our faith touches the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, we are completely changed. We are no longer the same. We ought to come to Jesus with faith, in faith, knowing and believing that he will and he can. So she is there, she touches the hem of his garment, and Jesus poses and asks a question, who touched me? Now there's a crowd, the crowd is growing. There's probably so many people who are busy brushing up against Jesus, or so many people who have even touched the hem of his garment, but this touch was different. Our touch and our communication and our need of Jesus Christ ought to be different from everybody. We ought to show that we really need Jesus Christ in our life. And Jesus says, no, 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 this is different. I perceive that the virtue has gone out of me. And the woman comes out uh, open in public and tells her story to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says, woman, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Now this story was a look at it. It's a, it's a beautiful story. It's a story that teaches me that with faith, if we come with our problems to Jesus Christ, we, to Jesus Christ with faith, we will be healed. One of my uh, friends who is a pastor always talks about, uh, says this statement when he preaches and he says, when you are joyous in life and you look back in your life, you will see that you are joyous for that which once gave you sorrow. I can imagine this woman, now that she is completely healed, singing one of my favorite songs, and she is saying to herself, to God be the glory for the great things he has done. She was sick, and now she is healed. She is going away singing this beautiful song, holy, holy is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. We're living in a world where we're not sure of what's going to happen tomorrow. The world has become all of a sudden different to all of us today. We have an illness amongst us that doctors cannot find a solution to. But let me tell you this morning, brothers and sisters, that we have a solution. And that solution is found in Jesus Christ. We ought to come to him in faith. He is the only one able to heal us. Only if we come to him in faith. He promises us in his Bible that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Just like this woman had, a, had different problems. She couldn't go to church. She had no friends. All the family probably deserted her. She couldn't go to church. But she still found it in her heart to make that step, make her way to Jesus Christ, and she was completely healed. This morning, I challenge you, brothers and sisters, do you have a problem? Do you have an illness that's bothering you? Give it all to Jesus. 
for he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And he is faithful. When our faith touches his faithfulness, we are completely healed and we become a different people. I hope that with these words, we will be encouraged as we live through this uh, difficult time, knowing that one day and soon and very soon, Jesus Christ is going to come. We ought to strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ. We ought to remain faithful to him. For in him, we can only find rest. The doctors of this world will try their best, but they will fail. But when they have all failed, when they, we have spent all our living upon these physicians, we ought to remember that there's a greatest physician amongst them all, and his name is Jesus Christ. So this morning, I give you Jesus Christ, and I hope that you give your life to him and that your faith is strengthened uh, this day. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the lesson that we have learned today from this story from the book of Luke. The story of faith, that we ought to come to you in faith and, be, and we will be healed completely. Forgive us, dear Lord, of our sins. Be with us this day and we can't wait to see you when you come for the second time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.